Uh, very good morning to you. Thank you so much for being part of this morning conversation. My name is Ram Maguko. It's a pleasure being with you today on this fine Tuesday morning. And of course, this is Why in the Morning. Welcome to Y254 TV. This is your number one news station. We are coming to you live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. We are also streaming live through our website, and that's at www.kbc.co.ke. We value your feedback. Let us know where you're watching us from. The hashtag, as always, is Why in the Morning. At Ram Aguko is my handle and at Y254 channel, which is the official station handle. And of course, uh, let us know where you're watching us from. Tell us what, what you think about these conversations that we are about to have on this fine Tuesday morning. Now, it's all about matters concerning skills. And uh, today we want to talk about skills training and entrepreneurship. How best can you use your skill to better yourself and are you aware that you've got skills today we want to talk about this particular issue here as uh, we touch on tvet institutions and uh, uh, i would uh, just as a reminder to all of us as i mentioned earlier on uh, we have uh, the world skills kenya which participated in the uh, 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 world skills international uh, and african union which is the uh, a competition or an event uh, which took place in on the 28th of uh, March tw this year, uh, all the way through to the 2nd of April. And of course, uh, it took place in Namibia. We shall be talking about that particular event because Kenya participated in three skill areas. And uh, uh, these skills are uh, where we managed to actually win uh, different, uh, group, different medals. And uh, the skills that we've got here, we have restaurant service, uh, 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 cooking and uh, mechatronics. We shall be taking a look at just to the restaurant service and cooking specifically because these are the people that are joining me today in studio. We, shall, we, we want to talk about how best we can be able to use our skills to you know, better ourselves and of course these people have managed these wonderful guys have managed to represent the country and they have come back with medals ladies and gentlemen to my far right i am with uh, i am with uh, shrada shah she is the gold medalist in uh, restaurant services that is under uh, hospitality and of course uh, next to me joseph kiari who is the bronze medalist and uh, in uh, cooking and uh, culinary arts karibu sana thank, thank you you, so huh? you guys are well you're we well first of all congratulations uh, uh, how, how, how does it feel, <laughs> uh, Joseph? How, how does it feel, you know, coming up with uh, bronze? Yeah, I know. Um, it feels nice. Uh -huh. I've been privileged and mm. uh, more so honored mm. to represent Kenya mm. as well as my institutions and myself. Mm. Um, what was the name of the institution that uh, you were under? I am from Boma International Hospitality College, mm -hmm. it's based wow. in South Sea. Wow. Yeah. Uh, 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 Sha, how, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm excited. Mm -hmm. uh, Congratulations yeah. on, on winning the, uh, becoming the gold medalist at the uh, hospitality restaurant service. How, how, how did Thank you feel you. coming up with, uh, you, know, you know, going there, they, they mentioned your name as the winner? Um, it was a very exciting feeling. Mm. You feel very proud of what you've achieved mm -hmm. after all the hard work you put in. Um, right. It feels like a great achievement. All right. Yeah. Congratulations to, to, to the both of you. And of course, we still have others that are still in studio. We shall be taking a look at, uh, at them also. We shall be having a conversation with them in a bit. But now let's talk about this particular event. Um, uh, uh, how did, did uh, the both of you, how did you, you know, um, how did you end up uh, um, uh, competing in Namibia? Let's start with how the journey started. How did this journey start from the beginning? Joseph. Uh, first of all, uh, before it reached us, mm. this, uh, this is under TVET, yes. TVET are Kenya. Mm. So TVET uh, joining with the schools, holding competitions, mm -hmm. and later on, uh, that's where they see even get the person, the right person who is going to represent Kenya. Mm -hmm. So we were privileged to be chosen, to be the ones to represent Kenya. So you, you, you had a competition so that you can be selected to go to represent? Yes, yes, country. yes. Of okay. course, uh, we had to take the best, you know, what Kenya is. <laughs> we are winners. You are so the best. I, are I, the best. I love that confidence. Sure. <laughs> so that competition that you that you guys had, um, to, uh, um, how did that competition go, Asha? 
Um, so we had like a competition within the school. Mm -hmm. uh, out of that, we were able to portray what we've been taught throughout our years um, is in what we are learning. Mm. And through that, the winners, we got to represent Kenya. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, let, me, let me get to know a bit about these categories that you're talking about here. Um, what is it when you say culinary uh, arts? What are you talking about? And uh, what exactly are you talking about when you say restaurant service, uh, you know, which is under hospitality? Let me start with you, Sha. Um, this restaurant service, what, what is it all about? Because there's so many things that are coming in my head. I'm trying mm -hmm. to guess what it could be. Is it, and I'm wondering, is that different from just saying hospitality? Yeah. So um, restaurant service is a wide um, area. Mm. It's obviously in the restaurant. Um, but within this category, these different uh, departments, there's like casual dining, fine dining, uh, banqueting, um, uh -huh. there's cocktail making, barista skills. So all this comes under restaurant service. Mm -hmm. um, all these different skills come make restaurant service a whole. Is, is, and, and, and is that under culinary arts or is culinary arts under hospitality? <laughs> let's, let's define that also. They're all under hospitality. It's uh -huh. the hospitality industry. Uh -huh. uh, so for me, uh, we are the people behind the be behind the whole scene. Mm -hmm. I'm cooking, and then something will be presented to you. So, uh, if I may say, for culinary arts, mm -hmm. it's not the it's not just cooking. Mm -hmm. It's how you're cooking, the method the methods you're using to prepare, how you're going to even plate the food and design the plates. Uh, that's why you will first uh, satisfy your eyes before you satisfy your stomach. Well, these are skills people need to talk about. Uh, and, and, and I love the fact that we have a gentleman who is doing culinary arts <laughs> in Africa where some people say men should not be in the kitchen. <laughs> no, of course, that's a lie. If, yeah. if you look at the industry right now, most of the chefs are men. Are men. Yeah. So the both of you, you like, mm -hmm. you both work in the uh, uh, hospitality industry and um, 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 is, 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 is what you do still um, having cooking in it? Because yours has cooking. Yes. Is, 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 is in your category, does it have cooking also? It's not really like the cooking like in the kitchen, mm -hmm. but there's things we do as um, live presentations to guests. Let's uh -huh. say um, salad making, uh -huh. um, but that's like the basic of mm -hmm. the cooking. It's just presentation skills mm -hmm. um, to the guest. Y you mentioned a few things here. You mentioned, uh, I had fine dining yeah. and other terminologies. Uh, l l l let's define each each one of them. What w w when you said fine dining, what skills are you talking about here? And there are others. Which other did you mention? Casual dining. Casual dining and fine uh, fine dining. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mimi, I just believed that dining is dining. <laughs> Tell us. Um, so casual dining is basically a more relaxed um, kind of setting. It's maybe like a fast food restaurant mm. or something where you're going to eat really quickly. Um, you don't really interact much with the guests in casual dining. Um, in banqueting, it's more a group event where you're serving a group of guests, maybe for like a wedding function mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then the fine dining is more personalized service. You interact more with the guests. It's more um, a, a relaxed setting as well, but more um, to the point. Like it's fine dining. You dress up like you dress well for a fine dining event. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the um, barista skills is just coffee, like a coffee shop kind of setting. Okay. And okay. the cocktail making. So, so, so here, um, f for example, how would you classify this? Somebody going, two people going out on a date. Mm -hmm. Where does it, the, it uh, get into? Is that Probably fine dining? fine dining, I guess. It depends on this kind of setting that they go to. If it's a more relaxed kind of restaurant, it's mm. probably casual dining. Mm -hmm. But it can be fine dining. And, and, so. and there are skills that you get taught, that, that, that you're taught in, in, in regards to these, but these different Yes, there are all, there's all different skills involved in each different area. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and in culinary? No, um, you'll realize that uh, what you're saying about, uh, for example, you're going for a date. Mm. Before the food goes, because you're taking your date uh, to have some grubs and eat. Yeah. So and, of you, course, and you need something good. Yeah. So you, you realize that all that works hand in hand. Yes. There's no way that fine dining can be a fine dining mm -hmm. without even the food that will be eaten. So Without culinary. Yes. No, without culinary. So that's why 
culinary comes in so the the industry the the two of us the, in, the, in the industry yes you cannot separate us because there's no you'll see me coming to serve you food as a chef <laughs> but unless it's a i don't know to make it so special uh, uh, yeah so uh-huh. because uh, we also have chefs who, who who cook in front of uh, the guests the, the guests yeah? yeah now that is more of like a show that's like you know they you want to showcase nice. your skills yeah <laughs> So it works hand in hand mm. and um for that to work you have to be familiar with everything. Mm-hmm. So you find that uh in the process of learning she'll uh, she'll get some skills in cooking. Mm-hmm. I'll get some skills in also what she's doing. Mm-hmm. So at times you'll find me in my chef's uniform. Mm-hmm. At times uh, you'll find me uh very well dressed ready to serve you. So mm-hmm. you have to be familiar with everything. But but but, but the both of you are, are are separate in terms of the skills that you are harnessing even the uniforms you'll be putting on but you work uh, hand in hand because one complements the other yeah. sure. is, that, is that true yes, yes, yes we can't work without each other you, the mm-hmm. rest the restaurant service and the culinary is like a pair so who is it that th- does this you know these things with the knife uh, it's sort of people they they play and then mm-hmm. the fire comes up those, I've, I've seen that's, those things that's that. just the chef so you have to have the skills to do that so you can can you can you yeah of course you can you can do that i can do that <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that. So, um uh, h- how do you think uh, what do you think about the the, the perception that uh, Kenyans have when it comes to these kind of skills? You know, there are people who be, who, who who do not see such skills as uh, as as things that people need to harness. And some don't even know that they've got such skills. You know, or, y- your thoughts on that? Have, have you come across people who just have this this um, mindset? Uh, against this hospitality industry yeah true uh you'll find that most of the people uh will be either telling you that uh your work is so so obvious it's obvious that i mean it. i can serve you i can it's <laughs> just putting food on a plate i can uh. serve you i can cook it's just boiling and doing this but uh uh that's why we say now things are different when you get to that place and when you're mm. learning mm. it's different no one no one never knew that uh you could get to class to to cook you've been taught how to cook we knew that this was from your mom and that's it your mom doesn't teach you how to cook mm-hmm. you're done mm. so now the world is changing and uh, you'll find that what you're doing is familiar internationally everywhere in the world mm-hmm. and that's why even world skills came in and and and, and it can bring money <laughs> of course still it is bringing money you see what salt bed does when you uh, are in the case of a chef coming in front of you to show you the skills uh i don't think uh, he'll be so polite on your pocket <laughs> for sure yeah because that, that he must put up a show sure he, that's a show so it's like you visited a show to go and uh, maybe see some artist or something mm. now you've made the chef to become an artist who is showcasing his skills to you mm. you, you, you thought on that this this um uh, uh, predominating mindset that people have against hospitality that ah i don't need to go to school to to learn such kind of skills Yeah, I think that is the general mindset people usually have. Mm. But I think once you look more deep into what really is in the hospitality industry, mm. you can understand that there is a wider range of what is happening um in it and what it requires to actually give a quality uh kind of service mm-hmm. to the guests that come to your hotel or to your restaurant. Yeah. To give them like a good experience and actually expect what they receive. Mm. Yeah. And 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 um uh this perception in, in in terms of gender. Do you think we are coming out of it uh, that uh, gender roles being applied in hospitality are now being taken away or or how predominant is it? Still on Isha. Um I feel like currently mm-hmm. it's more I think it's a gen like everyone is okay with I think it's a personal choice like if someone is interested in it um people are trying to pursue it but like we'd still encourage everyone like both the male and the female that it's not like i don't think anything is specifically for a specific kind of gender mm-hmm. i feel like if you have the calling or the desire to pursue something then mm-hmm. go ahead with that no, it was on gender um let me say past all those times when you you'd say we leave the cooking for the ladies mm-hmm. and then serving for the ladies maybe no Uh, right now everyone has the care if you have the chance to do it do it it's not for the ladies it's not for the gentlemen you can do it regardless mm. of the gender yeah mm-hmm. 
and 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 I love the fact that we are saying it is possible. We can do it, and we are seeing people in the industry that are actually making it. You know, who are some, those, some of those people that have mentored you, and 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 uh, brought up your skills, up trained you that you you, you remember that you think of, and you say. Um, if it are not for this person, you know, I, they, I would not be who I am and where I am today. Those people that have uh, mentored you and brought you up and, and encouraged you to uh, get to the point where now you have won these different medals. Uh, for me, I would say <coughs> from the start of uh, where I come from, my parents, mm -hmm. uh, giving you the courage to show you that you can do it. Mm -hmm. Then you take the next step and uh, I, take, I give it to the school. Where the school shows you, uh, this is easy, you can do it. It's not uh, just seeing it uh, on social medias and everything, you can do it. Mm -hmm. So after you've taken the courage, you've gone to school, now you're taught. Uh, when you're taught something, of course you're sure of what you're doing. So the courage, you even gain the courage. So as time pass, passes, each and every day, you're gaining ca courage, you're learning uh, new things, and uh, you, you're even having the courage to be in front of people. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And, and uh, you mentioned parents. And I'm looking at the African parent who, who tells you, who has told actually many kids, you want to, to go to do this? No, no, you must be this kind of a person. They choose your career for you. For you, it was different. Yeah, for me, my parent uh, is always willing to listen to me and see what I can do because now it's my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, for sure, uh, parents have to do this and trust their children. You know, they think uh, we are not the same age as our parents so you find that what your parent was doing in those days mm. uh it wasn't uh it didn't have the prizes then so you find that your parent would be telling you know cooking is just so lame and uh, everything so parents just have to let their their, stu their kids do what they are seeing because it's the trends mm -hmm. modernization is coming in each and every day and and, and they, they they have a role to play when it comes to building up skills of their own you know kids eh? Sure, because uh, for example, now here is where passion comes in before even the skill comes in. So you have mm -hmm. to start with the passion. So a parent trying to kill the passion, I think uh, even the skill won't come out as it is expected. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, like you said, um, my parents as well, mm. uh, for them to have the faith in me that I want to pursue this and them letting me to come to the college and actually study this and pursue the career that I want. Um, was a big step and then uh, to my lecturers um, mm. without them I don't think I'd be able to accomplish what I accomplished mm -hmm. I feel like the faith that they had in me and the skills that they put into me um, was a big step in this journey mm. that made me get to where I am at. all right all right now, let's talk about the competition now the day of the competition how, how was it you now you've uh, uh, you've been told that you're going to Nam Namibia. Yeah. How how was it for you, Shatra? Um, it was exciting, but mm. very nervous at the same time. You're scared. Uh, it's the first time you're competing in something like this. Mm. Uh, it was like a four-day competition, so every day had its different things to it. Uh -huh. But from the beginning to the end, it was an exciting time. Mm. You got to learn so much, but at the same time, it's like you're really nervous, wondering what's going to happen next. You know, the nervousness but even takes, uh, even uh, starts from the time you're leaving the airport. Yeah. And, and, and you're, you're on that plane, it cools down and then you land and then it comes back, back again. again. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was an exciting time. Mm -hmm. um, made so many friends mm -hmm. and yeah, it was a good learning experience. Mm -hmm. How was it for you? Now, on the day of the day, uh, you, now you've gone to Namibia. Uh, for me, allow me to say, mm. the competition did not start on the 20th of March for me. Because mm. it had to start with the practice, what you're doing. Uh -huh. uh, remember, most of the things we were doing was a mystery. You not you don't know what you're going to cook. You'll go find ingredients and then you you'll have to prepare. They they, they don't tell you that you'll prepare. Not this? everything, not everything that you knew. Just a few things. So mm. the rest you just have to practice. And how long do you take to cook? How long? How long are you given? Yeah, for the competition, we are uh. given uh, three hours to cook. Huh? That is to for you to prepare everything and uh, to even plate, and then you're given a number of uh, plates that you're supposed to be plating. So mm. the max comes in to how you started preparing. Preparation started on the first day. Mm -hmm. It's not only uh, cooking because you had to choose your ingredients, and then uh, you're choosing your ingredients for the 
next days coming so if it was it was like starting on a monday mm. you have to choose ingredients coming to friday so you had to plan yeah. yourself it starts with planning yourselves so it, it was that stuff plus the timings and everything there was a time you were told to plate eight plates that is four four different and uh, the other four also different wow and 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 you were you uh, were all these ingredients ingredients provided for uh, in the same location the same place same venue same building yes uh, the ingredients are there we didn't have to go to the market mm-hmm. uh, but you see the challenge comes in whereby you yourself you don't know how to choose your ingredients so mm-hmm. that was also part of the competition that's so why you, you must have that knowledge you must have that knowledge that's why i first told you the competition did not start on 28th mm. it started way 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 even before you are told uh, because for us we are privileged this is what you are learning mm-hmm. so you're taught you know like for example let me give you just a basic uh, mm. you're going to the market to take a tomato yeah uh, and you know you're, you're going to be using it on a friday mm-hmm. of course you're not going to take the ripe one because it will come and mess you up bit, even before friday comes in so the skills start from there so wow. it's from how you train mm. and how you bringing this up mm-hmm. and then at the end the product is fine how, how, how what are those challenges that you faced during this competition mm-hmm. just to mention a few um maybe some of the challenges were um just putting into i think the different things that mm-hmm. were there maybe from the equipment that we used back home mm-hmm. so just like learning how um those equipment are for or what they are for and how they're used those are some of the small challenges mm-hmm, that mm-hmm, we faced mm-hmm. and, and 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 you you, you managed to yes go yeah after because with the lecturers that we went with mr simon like the one lecturer i went with mm. just like asking him like what is this and him explaining like okay this is how this works we got to overcome that mm-hmm. at, at at no point did you doubt yourself did you at some point say you know what ah can I do it? I mean, there are small phases where you do that yourself. Because uh, during the competition, you're also looking at your other participants. Mm-hmm. So when you see someone doing something different than you are, you get the small doubts. Like, am I doing the right thing? Uh, or and you tend to copy? Would, would you like say, oh, um, maybe I should do what they're doing. Yeah. But at the same time, you're like, okay, I was taught this. So I'm going to stick with this and believe that this is the right thing. But at the same time, is that doubt? Like, am I really doing the right thing? Yeah. But at the end of it, like since we won, we were like we did what we knew, and mm-hmm. what we were taught was the mm-hmm. right. W- yeah. Would you like pick up notes from other people? You know, at that time when you, you you doubt yourself and you're like, oh, that guy has added this spice. Should I also add mine? Now for cooking, mm-hmm. that's uh, <laughs> that that might mess you up. Mm. Oh yeah, for sure, because you'll see somebody else. You have different cooking methods. And again, uh, according to how we chose the ingredients, you'll find that this one wanted to boil the carrot, this one yeah. wanted to roast the carrot. So there's no way you'll... So you, first of all, you have to be sure about yourself. So it first took, took me to uh, trust what I was taught and put that to practice. But mm. uh, of course, it's a, it's a challenge because um, you're thinking, is it, is it the right thing? Is it going to be the best thing out of between all these people? Mm-hmm. And uh, for for me, the challenges were we had live audience and mm. cameras staring at you. Mm. So live audience, they're like, wow, what is that? Wow. And you're not talking to them. Mm. So first of all, you're wondering, are these guys seeing? Maybe something is burning and you're still doing another thing. Remember, you're working on the time. Mm-hmm. So something mm-hmm. is burning and the audience is uh, already laughing. Did something burn on your hand? No, no nothing <laughs> burned. I remember I had... Um, South Africans, uh, those guys are psyched up in singing. So yeah. I remember those guys came to sing in front of me. They were like uh, around 20 people singing. Uh, as you cook? Yes, as I cook. Distractions. Distractions. <laughs> <laughs> and their South African partner was also next. So she's enjoying the music. Yeah. Myself, I can't even understand. They even trying to put in Jumbo Kenya so so you can <laughs> they can catch your attention. But this was just to, distra- dis- to distract me. Mm-hmm. But... Um, I think I was well, I was well prepared. Do you feel like that was intentionally done? Uh, of course, it was intentionally done, but uh, they didn't make it. <laughs> I was I, I had to enjoy. I had to I had to twist my mind to enjoy what I'm. Of course, of course, Kenyans we listen into everything. We are mm-hmm. not even understanding what what it is saying. So <laughs> I started uh, vibing to the music. <laughs> Speaking of which, you're saying Kenyans like listening to to, to anything, and we, we 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 just enjoy. Yeah, it. you just fit into anything. Uh, did, did you have any? Distractions that were coming your way. 
No, well, not really. Uh. Uh, we did have uh, people watching around, mm -hmm. but because it's more personalized with the guests that were already there, mm -hmm. we had guests coming in so that we could serve them as we were being assessed. But uh, so how, how did you manage stage fright or uh, a fear of crowds? Uh, do, do you have such kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, fear that gets to you? Yes, there, there is that fear that there's a lot of people watching what I'm doing. And I think that fear would come in more when we are um, showcasing some of the skills, like maybe the napkin folding or the fruits carving. When you're actually doing something and people are really interested in seeing what you're doing, that's where the fear would come a little bit more because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people watching. But when the guests, when you're serving the guests, you don't really focus on the people outside because your real focus is the guests. So that was much easier than mm -hmm. the other part. All right. I want us to talk about um, now when the event ended. How how did it? Uh, uh, how did you guys wrap the whole event up and now coming back to the country? The reception you received back here. Now that you won. Yes. Um, of course, it was the first time for everything. First mm. time for participating internationally. Mm -hmm. Again, first time winning. Mm -hmm. So you're taking your flight back. You don't know what you're going to meet. We have family. We have friends. And uh, of course, the family is large. Start with the, the school at the school. Mm. And then your family back home. Mm. So everyone is proud. Um, thank God we have the internet. So uh, already you could see the happiness. You post a status holding the medal. Mm -hmm. So you won. So you won. Mm. Others did not know what you're doing until they saw the medal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and this brought... Um, attention to some of the people of course because now they are like okay so this is possible mm. this is possible so mm. i think it has changed a lot even even if even if we didn't see even if uh, no one talks to me but i'm pretty sure it, it has changed minds uh, of mm. many mm. Uh, especially the youths mm -hmm. of my age yeah mm. and, and 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 there are those who never knew that you're actually taking this cause or that you went to this event yes sure until they saw the medal, so they're like, wait, what do you do? You know, that's when they become your friends. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sha, how was it for you? Coming back home now. Um, it was a really exciting feeling mm -hmm. because you felt like you've done the people at home proud. People who have put in a lot of their time and effort in yeah. what you have done. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a great feeling coming back to like actually tell them about the experience and what we've achieved and... How grateful we are so yeah it was a good exciting thankful feeling while mm -hmm. coming back knowing that we did mm -hmm. accomplish what we went and for. i don't know if you have the photos right now this is uh, i think this is isha yes me and joseph huh that's but the two of us and that's the two of us and our uh, experts sorry i can't see from where i am but i'm you, you can just tell me what this is <laughs> there's the two of you yeah yeah where was it in Namibia, no, at the closing Nam ceremony. That is the closing ceremony after uh, we've just uh, been awarded our, our medals. medals. Ah. And that? This one? This is uh, during the what? Restaurant service when we were given the medals. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm seeing a Kenyan flag and a Ugandan flag. Yes. Yeah. So Uganda was third, uh, mm. second was Madagascar, and mm. Kenya came first. Ah. Uh -huh. So this is for your category? Yes. Which is? Restaurant service. Uh -huh. Let's, uh, do you have another photo? I can take a look at uh, this. Congratulations. This is very nice. This is very nice. And remember, it's uh, the first time Kenya was participating. So you can imagine <laughs> the joy. Yeah. The, we, we even did not have the, the crowd to cheer us up. Remember when she's holding a, f a flag, um, the one with the, with the observers we went with and the competitors. And then... Uh, we have a whole bus of South Africans just watching. <laughs> Until theirs comes third, you'd mm. think they are the first ones. <laughs> <laughs> because of the, the shouts and the screams. Yeah, so I even thought uh, for the next competitions and preparations, we, sh we should also carry Kenyans. Mm. Yep. You think Kenyans need to go there also? Yeah, sure. This? So this uh, was a recognition and award uh, a certificate as well. That was, we were all recognized by UNESCO. That was yesterday. Uh -huh. Oh, yesterday. Yes, that you, was you, yesterday. You, was, it, was it a breakfast meeting that you had? Yes, it was a breakfast meeting we had. Mm -hmm. um, just With to say Tiveta thank you. and UNESCO. Yeah, UNESCO. Yeah. Tiveta and UNESCO. Okay. We okay. had a meeting with them yesterday. Uh -huh. You'll find that Tiveta works hand in hand with uh, very many people, including UNESCO. Mm. So that was UNESCO giving us the awards yesterday. 
then that's you. Yes, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> this must have been exciting. You, 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 you have um, created a, a, a good um, foundation for yourselves. Um, do you have any plans now moving, moving forward now that you've uh, managed to get where you are? What are some of those expectations that you, you know, you, you've got and those ambitions and the goals you've set for yourself? Um, I think it was a good stepping stone to go into the career that we want to. Because mm -hmm. coming into the college, no one would have thought we'd get such an um, experience or mm. exposure. So, yeah, just grateful to the lecturers who put in what they have put in us or mm -hmm. put in me. It encourages me that as I go out um, into starting my career after I graduate, mm -hmm. <coughs> sorry, mm. um, it will just, yeah, motivate me to do better. And to like my goal is to open my own hotel someday. Wow. So wow. just to put in these skills that I've learned into practice. Mm -hmm. And I wish you the best. Do, do that. Thank you, and I hope I'll be there among the first to eat there. <laughs> yes, your plans? Yeah, so for me, plans start earlier. The networking had to be there even in Namibia, so it was quite a chance, not only the bronze medal. Mm -hmm. So we had to network with other chefs. Uh, let me quote Gordon Ramsay who said, uh, for you to become a great chef, you have to work with great chefs. Of course, I cannot come from yeah. school and then start mm -hmm. my own restaurant. So. Mm. Now we have to work hand in hand. You have to know what this guy is doing. And then you try and do yours, bring them together. So it's all about teamwork and everything. That's what we thought. And uh, self-employment, of course, is the dream of everyone. Mm -hmm. You had, she wants a restaurant. So mm -hmm. who do you think will be the chef? I will be. I will be. <laughs> I will be <laughs> <the chef>. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. I, I, I'm looking forward to comparing not 10 years down the line. Yeah, ten, 10 even seems uh, too much. You might call it seven, six, mm -hmm. six ten years. 10 years is much. Yeah. Seven. It's, seven it's about the then. passion and uh, the courage you have in yourself. For you, how many years? Mm. Give ten, or take. Uh, around 10 years. Around 10 years. Yeah, maybe. So, so seven to 10 years. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Give me your thoughts in regards to this because um, I'm, I'm interested in finding out the perception of, Kenya, of the Kenyan youth when it comes to harnessing or building themselves in terms of their skills. Um, do you think the Kenyan youth has um, you know, um, embraced the fact that there are so many skills that they have that they have not managed to, uh, to, to you know, bring out of themselves? And how can they do that? You know? Because there's somebody watching you today and they, they, they're like, ah, they're motivated. But you see, that's as far as it goes. <laughs> yeah, so for me, I would say, of course, this is cook. Uh, if I talk about cooking, mm. We have a lot of people who have the skills. So yeah. for the youth, I would, urge them, I would urge them, so how about you put the skill to paper? And then, of course, because of course there's no you can be seated there alone. You need to know what's, what is happening out there. So uh, being in a school, mm. it encourages you and it shows you, it net, it gives you the networks and everything. Remember, I applied uh, to BOMA to pursue my diploma in culinary arts, mm. but I didn't know that I was going to go to Namibia one day. So this happened. So you'll find that these things happen even when you, you're, not, you're not even planning for them to happen. But op doors are opening day and day and day. So mm -hmm. there's no way you can just be seated there and then you expect something, a miracle to happen. So yeah. come out mm -hmm. and uh, it would be nice if you come out and have the papers on you. For, 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 for some, they say, you know, starting is always a problem. Uh, starting is a pro problem, but uh, how about you start with you? You start on working right. with yourself, then mm -hmm. come out. And, and, and you, advice to your fellow youths. Um, they have skills, but it's, it's not coming out. They're not building it up to, to, to make themselves better. Um, yeah, so I think that our mindset, mindset needs to change, mm -hmm. like as the youth. I feel like we get a lot of that... Um, our skills are small or it's not important or they're not valid. Like it's only big things like being a doctor or being like all these great things people think of. So I'd encourage them like no matter how small, um, like nothing is ever too small for mm. anyone. I mm. feel like um, whatever their uh, interests are in, they should like actually go out and pursue it. It's always a starting um, stepping stone. It's never easy and it's always like starting small, but you can never know how um, far and big you can go just mm -hmm. with one small mm -hmm. step into mm -hmm. what you really want in life.
and 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 and, and, and we, we just need to embrace the baby steps that you're making yeah? humble beginnings don't put so much pressure on yourself yeah. Yeah? You give yourself that time to grow and to build your skill step by step. I love what you said. You said you also interact with other people as you build yourself uh, step by step. Sure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. I want to bring this, the conversation to a close. And I want to give you guys to have a final word. What, you know, uh, would you say to just wrap it up? Uh, let me start with, uh, with you. Um, have a final word. As you talk to your people, and of course, you, I don't know, I believe you guys are on social media because now you. <laughs> <laughs> how can people find you if they, 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 they want to get in touch with you and follow you? And they, you know, now you have fans, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so I just like to say I'm really thankful for the opportunity that I even got to go there, starting like with the college um, that I study at, with Tiveta, UNESCO, all these people who partnered with this and who are actually involved in making Kenya grow and for us to be able to portray our skills. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just grateful for that opportunity and to my parents as well for actually letting me study here and giving me that opportunity. Um, and yeah, just grateful for all my friends, literally everyone who has supported me through mm -hmm. this journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, without them, it wouldn't have been possible. Wow, wow. Are you on social media? Yes, I am. Okay. So um, you can follow me on Instagram. My name is Shraddha Shah. Mm -hmm. yes. Asante sana. Uh, let me come to you. Final yeah. word. Uh, for me, first of all, is to, uh, to thank God uh, because of giving me the chance, the strength. To thank my parents for believing in me. Mm -hmm. uh, also the school, which also is family. And uh, it believed in me also. It has been nurturing my skills. Uh, to thank um, Tiveta in partnership with uh, UNESCO, uh, who gave me a chance to be there. And... Uh, for the people who are seated back home, you're thinking that uh, you don't have the skills, try. Uh, I said, uh, just let the la, let the change start with you. So just get up and then showcase what you have. Skills are what are pain uh, the youths outside here. As mm -hmm. you can see, you are very young. Mm -hmm. For anybody who would like to get in touch with me, I'm very ready to help. And uh, uh, I want to work with great chefs mm -hmm. and uh, of course, you have to get in touch, the network and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll find me on my socials at Kerry underscore Gitao. That's my Instagram. Mm -hmm. At Kerry Gitao for Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, thank you so much. I wish you guys the best. Keep thank doing you what you're so doing. Uh, keep going. Uh, looking forward to seeing the next big thing in the country. Especially in the hospitality industry. You know, when those diplomats come, they, they look for you. They know who to call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. All right. Thank you so much for coming. And of Thank course, uh, a, big, a big thanks to each and everyone that uh, has been tuned in. Remember, it's all about empowering the youth when it comes to the, you know, knowing that you've got power in your skills. All right. So you, you've got skills and you have what it takes to you know, make yourself better. Harness those skills, build your skills. I was with uh, Shraddha Shah and uh, Joseph uh, Carey. Uh, in this morning conversation about skills training and entrepreneurship. I hope you've learned something from wherever you are. We are taking a short break. Remember, this conversation still continues. We still have more coming up your way right here on Why in the Morning. My name is Ram Aguko. See you after this break.